everyone and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be doing a review and demo of the Huion LED light pad. This is the L4S model and I'm also going to be showing you guys how to use a light pad and just showing some tips and tricks that I've learnt over the months that I've been using this light pad. So I have worked with Huion in the past. They've actually sent me products to review, as some of you guys may remember, but they didn't send me this one. Um, this is a complete, this I bought with my own money, this isn't sponsored, uh, this is just me. I've found a <laughs> This is just a case of me buying a good light pad and wanting to share it with you guys because it's a good model and some of you guys were asking about light pads so this is one that I can definitely recommend. It works very well and it's not expensive. So I bought this back in the summer, um, it was back in August. I was doing an illustration project, I was having to transfer sketches to colouring paper and I was having to redo the same drawings again and again. I was doing illustrations for a book, hopefully I'll be able to share with you the finished proje uh, project soon. Um, but anyway. I was in desperate need of a light pad to, to speed up my workflow. I found this on Amazon and it's saved my life during that project. This is what the box looks like. It comes very well packaged as all of Huion's products have. I've never had any problem with the packaging from Huion. Um, it comes with a, a light pad, a, a, menu, a manual, a thank you card and then these corner protectors that protect the um, light pad when it's in transit. And uh, I'll get rid of this, we don't need this anymore, but I just wanted to show you the box. So the light box itself is designed to fit A4 paper size and as you can see you can fit an A4 piece of paper on there with some uh, uh, a little bit of extra space all the way round and there's also a ruler all the way round both sides and this is in centimetres so that's useful if you need to measure something or line something up and it also has this nice little uh, grey clip on the side here and the idea of, uh, of this is is that you can slide your piece of paper under it and that keeps it steady uh, it keeps it from sliding around when you're uh, tracing so that's very useful the light box itself is very light and nicely designed it has little cushioned feet on the base of it so you don't scratch your work surface and then it has uh, this little um, thing here and this is for the uh, USB cable so you plug the cable in like that and then the USB is on the other end and this is how you um, get the light box to work you need to have a USB uh, source of power so you can plug this into your computer into your laptop I have a USB block one of those charging blocks that has a plug on one end and USB slots in the other so I use that when I'm um, using the light box and I also like the fact that it's very light because I, I like to work at my desk but I often work um, elsewhere sometimes I'm sitting with stuff on my lap I have a sort of a desk uh, a lap um, tray that has a, an easel uh, connection uh, part to it so I lean it up against the easel it's very light it's easy to carry around now to turn it on you just want to plug in plug it in like that and this little button here is a heat sensitive button so you can turn it on by just pressing it like that and the the nice thing about it as well is that you can ad you can adjust the brightness so you're just going to keep tapping it to make it darker and lighter depending on how um, light or dark you want the, uh, the light to be. I want to share a tip with you guys now. Now this is something that didn't occur to me when I first used the light box. Now it's probably obvious to most of you but I'm going to share it anyway just in case there are a few of you who have a light box and can't get it to work properly. And what, what I was doing was that I was trying to trace um, card on I had a an image on a piece of card and then I had watercolor paper and I was placing it over the top and nothing was coming through so I just figured that I was using the paper was too thick but that wasn't the problem the problem was that I had overhead lights shining directly down onto the light box so I had to turn off my lights first so if I just lean down here and find the plug to the lights which is uh, here now, the camera will, I'm not, the reason I'm showing you this, the camera footage will go completely grainy and I'm very sorry about that, but just so you guys can see, when it's bright, you can see through that. You can see through it really well. Now, I'm not suggesting you have to work in the dark in order to see through the paper, you don't. But you just need to turn off any bright overhead lights and, that, and then you can see, this is 300 gram cardstock. 
I've placed down there and this is also 300 gram so you can see how well you can you can trace and now if I put on put this sketch on which has a lighter line that also shows through really well so if you have a light box and you're having you're having trouble seeing through or you're using really thick papers just try turning the lights off now I know you'll all say that's obvious but for, honestly for me I spent days with it not working because it just didn't occur to me to turn my bright overhead lights off. Now you can have background light, you can do it in the daytime, but any oh, if you have light that's shining directly on the light box, it will cancel out the light that's coming up through the box. And obviously if you're working on really thick paper, then you just turn all the lights off and you can see perfectly uh, to draw it. So that's just my tip for using the light box. And you can see how bright this is. You can also see here if I if I touch the button I can make it darker and lighter and darker and lighter and I'm sorry for the quality of the footage obviously I've turned the lights off so um, it's going to look a bit grainy so that's my big tip for using the light box and by turning the overhead lights off you can see through 300 gram cardstock 300 gram watercolor paper and I think that's pretty impressive for a light box because 300 gram paper is really thick and you'd never be able to see through it if you held it up to a window or anything else. If you're having trouble with your light box um, it just may be that your lights are too bright and uh, maybe you could experiment and uh, see if that's the case. So anyway um, I think if you are someone who does a lot of uh, transferring like I do then a light box is really helpful. Um, it really did, it was so useful when I was doing that project and now whenever I'm transferring anything, um, if I transfer sketches from sketching paper to my colouring paper because I'm, I'm heavy handed when I'm sketching and I rub out a lot and I often mess the paper up so I need to keep my colouring paper, particularly when I'm using markers, the, the paper needs to be in pretty good condition. So um, by transferring my sketch I can just have a very faint pencil line on the paper. I also use it when I'm transferring digital stamps or colouring pa um, colouring pages. If you print them out on your home printer, they'll run. If you get water, the ink will run most of the time. So you can uh, put it on. I can transfer it onto watercolour paper, and uh, the light box is really useful for me because of that. Another way that you can transfer one image, an image from one piece of paper to another, is to use transfer paper. I actually have a tutorial on that, and I'll link it in the iCard section of this video up there in the corner. Click it, you'll find a link to that tutorial. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed my tip for using the light box. I'm, I'm sure most of you will think it's obvious, but I did think it was worth mentioning because I didn't think it was obvious when I first got it. And uh, oh, you, a light box is just so easy to use. You plug it in, you put your image down, you put your paper on top, you turn, the, you turn your overhead lights off, you turn the light box on and then you trace and it can save you a lot of time if you en if you uh, need to do a lot of transferring. So anyway, um, that's about all for this video. The Huion light pad, as I said, is, re is really good. I really like it myself. I bought it and um, it was definitely a really good investment for me and if this is the one that I use. Some of you guys were asking, this is the one that I use and I would definitely say it's a good light, a good light pad. Make sure you leave any questions you have down in the comments below and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful week and I will see you again next time.